Hey guys, welcome back again to the channel. So today's questions were shared by Mohit Sharma. He is one of our subscriber and he got a chance to attend a cognizant interview. He has experience mainly in Java 8, Spring Boot, microservices and concurrency, like in threading as well. The questions shared by him are not just basic one. These are the one cognizant usually asked to the developers who is having around 3 years to 5 years of experience. So I will break them down in a simple and natural way. Alright, so let's start the video. Question number one is, what is the main features introduced in Java 8 and which one do you actually use in your real project? Now Java 8 introduced a lot of features, a lot of changes, but most commonly we use stream APIs and Lambda expressions. Lambda helps to reduce boilerplate code, especially in filtering and mapping operations, while stream allows us to process collections in a functional style. We also use optional or optional class to avoid null checks. Then comes method references. Method references make the code more cleaner and default and private method in interfaces were also introduced. So coming to our next question which is how does stream API work internally in Java? So if you need to explain this you can say that stream don't store data they work on the top of collection. Stream pipeline has three steps first is the source then we have a intermediate operations and then we have a terminal operations. Intermediate operations are lazy. They don't run until a terminal operation is called. And we also have a parallel stream method. Using that we can uh, operation. But you should be very careful while using parallel streams. Now coming to our next question which is how does Spring Boot simplifies dependency management and application setup. You can explain it like this. Spring Boot provides starter which bundle common dependencies for us. It also handles most of the configuration automatically using auto configuration. So instead of writing XML or manual bean definition, Spring Boot sets defaults for you. The built-in embedded server, which is by default Tomcat, makes it easy to run application without installing the Tomcat. So basically it allows us to focus on the business logic instead of setting up the project. Alright, here we go to our next question which is how does AutoWired work internally? in spring so basically in this interview interviewer go want to go deep on every aspect of spring boot now how to answer the internal working of auto wired annotation you can explain it like this auto wire annotation tells spring to inject a bean into your class during component scanning spring creates the bean and store them in a ioc container when it sees the auto wire annotation it looks for the matching bean by type if there are multiple beans of the same type, it uses qualifier or bean names to decide. Internally, this works using reflection, not manual object creation. Coming to our next question, which is what is the difference between monolithic application and microservices? We have talked about this earlier as well in one of my previous videos. So basically in a monolith application, the entire application is packaged and deployed in inside a one single unit. All modules share the same code base, same deployment and same database. While in microservice, each service is independent. It has its own deployment, own scaling, own database. So basically microservice gives you more flexibility, but it requires better monitoring and communication handling and DevOps support as well. And that is why microservice is complex to manage. Coming to our next question, which is how do you handle inter-service communication or service to service communication in microservices? Now the services talk to each other using HTTP. There are multiple ways we can use feign client, we can use rest template and suppose if you are using feign client, it makes rest call feels like you are calling a normal Java method. Also there are two types of communication, asynchronous communication and synchronous communication. If you are using synchronous communication, then we need to implement retries and timeouts as well. And if it is a asynchronous communication, then we use messaging tools like Kafka or RabbitMQ. The main idea is choosing the right communication based on your requirement or in your project's requirement. Nonetheless, the most common way is using the REST template. Now the next question is what is REST controller and how is it, it is different from controller annotation and how it is different from controller annotation. Now to answer this, you can say that REST controller is used when you want to return JSON object or JSON directly. Basically, it combines controller annotation and response body annotation. Whatever you return gets written straight into the HTTP response as JSON. Controller annotation is used when you want to return views like JSP or HTML templates. Of course, we can use controller with REST template as well, but then you have to use response body annotation also. But in microservices, if you are using REST APIs, we use REST controller mostly. Then we come to our next question, which is what is the use of 
completable future now if you are familiar with asynchronous programming you must have heard about completable future and if you don't if you never heard about it this answer will be very useful for you basically completable future help us to run tasks asynchronously it allows non blocking calls so your thread doesn't wait for the result you can chain multiple tasks run them in parallel and combine their result as well it is useful when your service calls are multiple external apis and you want to optimize the time it is very clearer compared to the manual handling of threads coming to our next question which is also on concurrency the question is what happens if two thread access a shared variable without synchronization well what do you think what will happen if you know the answer you can comment down as well so basically it leads to inconsistent behavior one thread may overwrite the value written by another thread without synchronization there is no guarantee about the order of execution you may get stale values because each thread might read from its own cpu cache and that is why we use synchronize keyword volatile keyword or maybe other concurrency utilities now jumping to our next question which is how do you handle timeouts and retries in microservices now timeout and retries plays a, a important part while writing the microservices if i talk about timeouts it ensures your service doesn't wait forever for a response in spring cloud we use feng with the timeout setting retries on the other hand help in cases where the downstream services fail temporarily libraries like resilience 4j hitrix these handles retries and circuit breaker fallbacks this makes our system more fault tolerant so that is all for today's video it is very short video these questions were shared by mohit sharma after his cognizant interview and if you are also preparing for java spring boot microservices or concurrency make sure you are strong in these concepts because these companies like cognizant ask very practical questions and if you like this video make sure to subscribe and share it with your friends as well and if you want to join mock interview session or share your own interview experience or own interview questions you can check the description box. I, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.